Coming up on Tech News Today, Spotify is coming to the web. HP's got new Windows 8 PCs, but they're not all so touchy. And that may or may not be a good thing. Plus, Google makes it rain fiber in Kansas City. All that and more coming up. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Monday, the 10th of September, 2012. Tech News Today is brought to you by GoToAssist by Citrix. Take control of your IT world from one simple cloud based platform. Provide live or unattended support to all your users from anywhere. Sign up for your 30-day free trial today. Visit gotoassist.com and use promo code TNT. And buy the new Squarespace. Squarespace introduces a new content management system, making it faster and easier to create a high-quality website or blog. Plus more than 50 new features, including mobile responsive designs. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use offer code TNT9. And buy Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your iPhone, iPad, MacBook, or Android smartphones. Find out what your gadget is worth and get cash to upgrade to the latest iPhone at gazelle.com. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Maya Zachar. I'm Jason Howell. And this is the show where we try to keep you up to date on the most important stories in the tech world, starting each time with the top 10 stories of the day in the news feeds. Multiple sources to multiple websites report Spotify is getting ready to roll out a web browser-based version of its music service. Some users should start seeing the option available within a month, according to All Things D. The web version won't have the ability to play cached songs or use Spotify's apps, so it's not meant to replace your Spotify software. However, TechCrunch reports Spotify may be bringing its app platform to its mobile apps, particularly the iOS app. Last week, when Nokia unveiled its new Windows 8 phone handsets, the Lumia 920 got a lot of attention for a promotional video that showed off the camera's amazing optical image stabilization, except that that video was shot by a phone not using optical image stabilization. Nokia has since apologized for what it calls confusion. But a Nokia spokesperson told Bloomberg that an ethics and compliance officer for the company is now investigating the matter to understand what happened and that Nokia is dealing with the issue quickly, fairly, and privately, which leads me to believe that someone's getting fired. Probably. You're axed. T-Mobile wants the iPhone so badly that it's now putting together a new campaign called Unlocked and Unlimited. You'll find unlocked iPhones in T-Mobile stores for demos. Soon you'll also see TV commercials telling you that unlocked iPhone users, you guys should come over to the T-Mobile side. What? You want more? Well, sure. T-Mobile is also working on a few of its own iPhone apps, so you have a unique experience. T-Mobile has never carried the iPhone officially, but has over a million of them running on its network. It's kind of stalkery, you know? It's like overly attached mobile network. <laughs> <laughs> HP debuted four new all-in-one PCs set to come out this autumn, along with the launch of Windows 8. The star of the line is the HP Spectre 1, a 23.6-inch all-in-one PC with a 1920 by 1080 display, NFC, and a wireless trackpad for $1,299 coming in November. HP also announced two touchscreen HP Envys at 23 and 20 inches, as well as an HP Pavilion 20-inch model for $499. Those three models will arrive in October, presumably after the October 26th launch of Windows 8. Tablets are big adult tools, and they're really scary. That's what Toys R Us wants you to think anyway. The 7-inch $150 Tabio tablet is launching today from Toys R Us. will be sold exclusively at their stores. Wi-Fi enabled, has 4 gigabytes of flash memory, runs ice cream sandwich, comes with 50 apps pre-installed. Toys R Us says they're carefully selected to entertain and educate children while helping them explore the Internet. Toys R Us is also launching the Tabio App Store, which will only include kid-friendly apps and content. I wanted to talk about the new Google Drive iOS app getting native doc editing, but no, that's not going to happen. Instead, I'm going to talk about Kansas City getting bathed in Google Fiber. Google announced that nearly 90% of eligible fiber hoods have qualified and signed up for the service. 70 bucks per month will get Google Fiber users one gigabit per second. To qualify, communities had to meet a goal of pre-registration by paying a $10 fee by September 9th. 
Did the government stop you? Is that why you can talk about it? <laughs> Amazon announced over the weekend they'll allow Kindle Fire HD purchasers to opt out of the lock screen ads for a fee of $15. The one-time payment also removes some ads from the bottom of the screen. Amazon also confirmed to all things D that Microsoft's Bing search engine will be the default search engine in the Kindle Fire web browser. The FBI has begun rolling out facial recognition to identify criminals as part of an update to the National Fingerprint Database. This is just part of the Bureau's $1 billion Next Generation Identification Program, or NGI, which will also add biometrics such as iris scans, DNA analysis, and voice identification. Some states started uploading their photos as part of a pilot program back in February, and this is scheduled to be rolled out nationwide by 2014. In addition to scanning mugshots for a match, officials would have the tools to track a suspect by picking their face out in a crowd. Kotaku reports the beta version of Steam's big picture mode goes live this afternoon. If you have a PC hooked up to a television, you'll be able to push a button and get a new interface that's similar to Xbox 360's dashboard and meant to be used from a few feet away, like on your couch in your living room. You can also use a game controller with the interface, and Kotaku reports that the on-screen keyboard is much better than the traditional QWERTY mimicry that everybody else uses. Yeah, they're not building an interface for the Steam box at all. The leaked UDIDs we heard about last week did not come from the FBI. According to the CEO of Blue Toad, they came from his app publishing company. Paul DeHart told NBC News that the independent consultant, David Schutz, indicated the leak came from Blue Toad, and after performing its own internal forensic audit, Blue Toad confirmed it. The developer says they no longer collect UDIDs. Oh, good, good for them. Uh, they're also not like providing any kind of tool for lookup, so you still got to use whatever anybody else found on Pastebin if you're worried about it. All right, uh, this episode of Tech News Today brought to you by GoToAssist. In IT, it's challenging to get your team working from the same office. Everybody's off traveling, doing meetings all over the world uh, sometimes. And if your supporting members work remotely already, it can be a nightmare. That's why you need GoToAssist by Citrix. You can take control of your entire IT world from one simple cloud-based platform. Here's how it works. Uh, with GoToAssist, you keep all your systems up and running while keeping all of your users supported, and you don't have to move from your computer. Uh, provide live or unattended support from anywhere, even from your iPad. You could be in the airport flying somewhere, and somebody's like, I got a problem. You can fix it right there on the iPad. GoToAssist monitoring, monitoring lets you get customizable dashboard displaying performance of all your networks, servers, and desktops, which means sometimes you can actually fix problems before they become problems. Proactive alerting allows you to do that. Uh, you look like a hero, so you got to try. Go to Assist is easy to use. You can set it up in just a few minutes, and it's from Citrix, a trusted leader in IT. We use it here. Russell uh, talked it up a lot, and, and Leo doesn't even have to roll out of bed if he wants to fix something, reboot a stream, something like that. So sign up for your special 30-day free trial today. Visit gotoassist.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code TNT. That's go to assist, G O T O A S S I S T dot com, promo code TNT. And we thank Citrix for their support of everything here at Twit, including tech news today. All right, let's welcome into the show a guy I'm really excited to have, Willie Dills Gregory, co host of The Instance, also a producer of the Litquake Litcast and community manager at Podomatic.com. Welcome, Dills. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good to excited have you, to man. Here. Yeah, I'm really excited to be on the show. I've, uh, this is one of the podcasts that kind of makes it in my regular rotation all the time. So uh, it's really cool. The instance is likewise in my regular rotation. Well, that's what I've heard. Yeah, I've heard, though, that you listen to it on now, I know, three times speed. Most of the time, yeah. So okay. you, you sound really slow to me right now. I know, I know. It's, it, well, talking I am faster. pretty high right now. So. <laughs> uh, also, we're glad the Giants did well this weekend, or else Dills would just be, like, crying. Yeah, I'd be, I'd Hulk out. So, yeah, it's a good, it's a good thing we took two out of three from the Dodgers. And as everybody who listens to the instance knows, I'm a huge Giants fan. I actually do a Giants podcast as well, uh, TortureCast. So if you are a Giants fan, you'll like it. If you're not, you won't care. Let's start off for music fans uh, with Spotify launching that browser-based version. Yeah, this is, uh, according to sources, uh, both TechCrunch and All Things D have them. Uh, that And the rumor is Spotify is planning to launch completely overhauled browser-based version of its service. Now, as of right now, it's it's actually an app that you download on your computer. Of course, um, Spotify has been hugely successful with Facebook integration. Uh, last year at F8, when Facebook um, announced a, a few uh, uh, um, 
services that were part of its open graph, Spotify was one of the first um, and saw a huge uptick in usage um, within six weeks, went from 1.3 million users to 2.4 daily users, um, according to app data, from um, almost 4 million users monthly to 7.4 uh, monthly users. So they've experienced quite a bit of growth. And since coming to the U.S. last year, Spotify has rolled out quite a few um additions to just its its app. They have an iPad app, they have an iPhone app too. Android launched their own app platform, launched a sort of Pandora competing radio service. We talked about that Everybody's a little last that week. Days, yeah, probably, it's yeah. the big thing. Apple's even getting into the game. Um, but you don't have a browser-based version of Spotify. So if I've got everything set up on my computer here and I need to hop on to Ayaz's computer because he's letting me use it for the day and he doesn't have Spotify downloaded, well, I could go ahead and download it but there's a little bit of a barrier to entry. Yeah. So for new users, I think that this is a great option uh, to offer folks. Now, uh, Josh Constein over at TechCrunch mentioned it's possible that Spotify would look into a more reasonable monthly rate. Right now, you pay $5 a month if you don't want to see ads. But if you pay $10 a month, you also get mobile access. Now, a lot of people want mobile access because you want your music everywhere. But $10 a month is the exact same price for what would I think most people would consider their biggest competitor, uh, which is RDO, although RDO has quite a few uh, fewer users. Um, so let's say uh, you're paying $5 a month and you figure, well, you know, mobile access would be nice, but then I'm paying twice as much as I'm paying now. Perhaps they could offer an $8 a month subscription, which would uh, sort of seem like a benefit for people who are already paying. Um, and that could translate into uh, more money per month. All Things D says, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Yeah. They're doing okay now. Why, why would they? What's their incentive? Although All Things D did point out, Spotify does play around with their pricing models a lot. So it's not outside the realm of possibility that they might try something. Sure. But yeah. So they just want to get as much money as they can out of you right now. I mean, do you think that there are enough folks out there who go, I just don't want to download something to my computer. So Spotify sounds fine, but it's not really for me that would start using it if they had a browser-based version? I think Spotify definitely needs a web-based component because... <clears throat> Excuse me. They have, they have those those embedded players where you can try to play and uh, play a song, but it makes you either run the app or you have to download the app if you don't have it already. And without that web component, this is a very clunky experience. And if Spotify wants to be on every site and be the default player for music, uh, embedded that is, they need a web component. And it just seems like it's it's necessary for that. Whether they'll gain a whole bunch of followers that way, I'm pretty sure they probably will get subscribers that way because like oh it's on the browser. That means I can run it on anything. Mm -hmm. You're not necessarily waiting to see that little restart restart Spotify for the latest thing. It'll always be updated. So it's it seems like it's a necessary component for their uh, success. I think it also puts it in more direct competition with Pandora. If you want yeah, to access absolutely. Pandora on the web, it's just a browser. Um, yeah, no, I, I think also one, one thing that this does is it opens up to uh, work computers and things like that where uh, you can't, sometimes you can't really download things onto a computer because that's restricted. So now at work, I just launch it on a, on a browser. I don't have to download something to my computer. And I mean, you know, this isn't for like my computer at work doesn't, I have Diablo three on it, but uh, some people can't download things like Spotify onto that computer. So, and, and like you mentioned with the players, um, you know, if it's an HTML five player that, that gets posted anywhere and I can just play something right off of Spotify, that would be, I think the, the way to go about that and having it in a web browser, I think is, I think it's a step forward. As far as the pricing, I think they shouldn't charge a monthly fee for mobile, they should just make you pay for the app one time. Uh, like, you know, make the app like seven bucks or something. And then just now I have it. Because basically, right, the app is is useless. It's it's a free app that's not free, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's a free app that doesn't do anything. <laughs> it's, exactly. It doesn't do anything until you pay a monthly fee. So I, I, would, don't, I would totally get it if it was a one-time fee to pay my normal monthly fee for Spotify. And then just now I have the app, too. I think Spotify um, gives you access to the radio Oh, do they? You see, get something. on the app. So, like, it's not oh, as, okay. as lousy as it used to be because I know I had Spotify. I'm like, oh, look, nothing until they added radio. Yeah. Although it's weird because, you, you know, brought, you brought up Pandora competition, and I kind of disliked the fact that I had to keep running Pandora in a tab. I wanted to use it as an application. So I guess it's to hit both those markets. 
<laughs> See, and, and, and here's me with my axe to grind, right? Which is like, I want everything to be in the web browser. I don't want to have to install software. I feel like that's going backwards. That's like going in reverse in time. Let's let's have an open platform where I can just log on to any web browser on any machine, and it doesn't matter what operating system I'm running or anything else. I can just get my services through the cloud. Well, I mean, you guys are both. You want opposite things. IaaS doesn't want the tab open. You do, so it makes perfect sense that Spotify is like, let's just not even make you choose. We'll just give everybody the option that they prefer. Um, supposedly, Spotify is also going to beef up their discovery options. So not only can I listen to that album that I, you know, I know is a new release, but more discovery options like following not only um, the listening habits of my friends, but cool people, uh, the, the kind of people, suggested user lists, celebrities, that sort of thing that Spotify wants to put front and center. So there's a little bit more emphasis on um, curating playlists uh, by people that you either know or you admire or have really good music tastes, which is good and because Spotify. Yeah, like Sean, Sean Parker. Parker is their example. For uh, example, he has some sort of a hipster <laughs> playlist. I think has like five hundred thousand subscribers who are really interested in that kind of music. I've actually looked at the playlist. Some of the music is pretty good. So hey, Sean Parker, you've got some good taste. I nice shot. He was Sean played Parker. by Justin Timberlake, so he's instantly cool. I think right. he obviously That's can dance. Yeah. Sort of looks you like know, Justin Timberlake all that good in, that, stuff. in that profile picture. <laughs> All right, uh, Amazon, uh, we found out on Friday, is going to make all the Kindle Fire people watch ads. There's no way out of it. Well, it turns out they've, they've changed their mind, or yeah. at least they announced there is a way yeah, out. Yeah, even more Amazon fallout. On the 7th, they said you couldn't remove special offers from any of the new Kindle Fires. 24 hours later, they, they put out a statement, $15 gets you out of the ads. CNET found out that that applies to all the Fires, not just the HD, because their statement was only about the HD. So 15 bucks, no ads on the uh, Kindle Fire and Kindle Fire HD. Uh, Amazon also uh, did something interesting by including Bing as a default search engine on the Fire. Now, for the first generation, it was Google. And if you want, if you hate this idea, you can switch later. So I guess Amazon trying the... You okay, can change the default. You can change right? the default well, that's uh, search true in engine. That's iOS, too, and other operating systems. But by, default, by, by default, the first thing you'll see is Bing. And Amazon also threw in another little thing while they were just, you know, here's some hardware. They had this new... Uh, ability for developers to sell physical goods inside of games. Activision is the first partner. So if you want to buy toys of Skylanders, and this actually works with the game. You actually can scan it in and it kind of works uh, to do a new new function of the game. You can do that. Uses that was in the announcement. Remember when he was holding up the, the toy? But I had no it, it idea why. It kind of got shuffled under the rug, I guess. Yeah, it turns out that you can sell physical goods in there and uses Amazon's one click. So it's got a lot of easy Murloc. way to lose some, a lot of money. Uh, what do we think of Amazon's quick flip-flop on the on the special offers uh, feature? Because it seemed like, oh, look, the pricing structure is pretty simple. And they're like, nobody can opt out. 24 hours of, of people getting upset, and they switched it. Well, because there you go, right? I mean, this is a big deal. Amazon had a big announcement last week, and all of a sudden, in one day, Amazon's like, uh-oh, these voices aren't going away. And people are like, wait a second. We wanted to be mad at something, and we found something to be mad at. <laughs> Listen to how loud we are. And Amazon's like, just stop. Let's just squelch this whole thing. And they didn't think worse. that was going to happen? Right. That's that's yeah. my question is, like, if you're not telling people about that, you have to expect pushback, especially particularly if it's paying more to get rid of ads. People will be angry about that. Dills, what do you think of, the, of this, of this uh, switch? Well... Okay, well, uh, you know, coming from from the uh, the gaming perspective, we've dealt with this plenty of times with Blizzard and World of Warcraft. Um, they said at one point they were going to be using your your actual email address as your ID on the forums, and people went nuts. And they, I think, they went nuts for a solid week or so before they finally switched back on that. But I, you know, honestly, I think a company buckling under the pressure of the people who are going to be paying for their product. I think that's fine. I think you should. If people really make an uproar, go ahead and say, whoops, we made a mistake. Um, 24 hours is pretty quick to do that. It's not like an extended period of time of people complaining. But if the, if, you know, if the buzz and the, and, the, and the feedback was so loud that they just had to take notice, I think it's great. I think, yeah, turn, turn it around. I don't, know if 15, I don't know if I would pay 15 bucks. I don't know if I'd pay 159 for a fire, though, either. So. Well, the next thing that people will, me. Be, will people will people be outraged about Bing being the default search engine? Will people <laughs> even care, or is this going to be an uptick for Bing? That's a good thing I, for Bing. I think yeah, it's good for Bing. It's it's a weird thing for Google right now. Apparently, no company wants to play with Google anymore. Um, so I mean, I know Apple's moving away from them as well. So we'll see what happens uh, in the future here. It looks like everybody's just kind of annoyed with Google's practices these days. 
The and harder they grip, the more being... devices will slip through their fingers. Yeah, exactly. It's that's very true. I, you know, I think what's going on here is Amazon. I almost suspect Amazon planned it this way, uh, although that would be kind of stupid. But I think it's better for them to say, look, there's one price for the Kindle Fire. Now, if you don't want the ads, here, pay an extra $15. Rather than, the, remember the last time they had this kind of jank, janky thing of, well, there was a cheap price, but then you could select a, a more expensive price and it would come without the ads. This mm -hmm. way, it's, it's simple about what you're paying for. And then if you get the thing and you don't like the ads, you can pay to turn them off. So it's pretty much the same thing as the price before. In fact, it's a little cheaper than the price before. Uh, and Amazon gets to force a few ads through to you while you decide, you know, while, sure. you, while you get around to deciding whether you want to pay the 15 bucks or not. I think for the fire line in particular, they had to go with this one base, this, this one price structure because they already have difference by capacity, screen size, and LTE. To say that there's another variant when, you, when you're selecting, it, it, I think it would just confuse people. Yeah. I used to work at the Apple store, the retail store, and uh, the, when iPad 2 came out and suddenly you could get it in white, black, 3G, non-3G, 32, 16, 64, all of a sudden the sales became extremely complicated and stocking the store with the right models became extremely complicated. And I think, you know, based upon that fact, any company who's putting out products like these, like these tablets realizes that the less options we can give you up front, the faster we can sell this product and also the faster we can stock our stores with it. So, yeah, I think it's definitely a smart move to consolidate that if you can. Make it as easy as possible to order. That's a, exactly. def definitely yeah. what a retailer wants to do. Mm -hmm. uh, well, HP is trying to distract you from the fact that they've added 2,000 layoffs to their estimated layoff numbers. So they came out with new all-in-one PCs. Yay. HP Spectre 1, as we mentioned, 1920 by 1080 display, <clears throat> but no touchscreen. Now, this is going to be a Windows 8 all-in-one, right? No touchscreen. Uh, wireless trackpad instead. Now, you'll get a mouse and a wireless trackpad, both. Uh, the Vizio did the same thing. They did, did an all-in-one, uh, but they gave you a trackpad instead of making it a touchscreen. 11.5 millimeters thick, and HP said, look, if we made it in a touchscreen, we'd, we'd have to make it a lot thicker. We want this to be a nice, thin, all-in-one PC. Uh, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, HDMI out, of course, and NFC, which they're calling Touch Zone. Why don't they just call it NFC? I guess it's kind of a football-related term either way. Uh, but allows you to take your <laughs> NFC-enabled smartphone and log in with it. So once, you, once you've set it up, you can just touch your phone if it's NFC enabled and log in. You can also do file transfer, stream audio and video. Uh, and they give you a couple stickers that you can use for the login. So if you wanted to log in with, uh, you know, I don't know, your your uh, elbow, probably not a good idea. The sticker <laughs> might wear off. But, you, you know, you can put it on your some wallet. other thing uh, that you can hand around. Yeah, you maybe put it in your wallet. I, I was snickering at the, at the Spectre a little bit because, like, it's super thin. If we add, if we add a touchscreen, it's going to make it thicker. It's a desktop. It's not like it's a laptop or something yeah. you're carrying around. Oh, my gosh, it's so thin. It's on my desk. It's sitting there all day. <laughs> well, I mean, people like thin TVs, too, and they're not carrying those around. That's just, that's also, I find that very silly as well, because at this point, because when you're hanging it on the wall, you add But it's the look. Everything. It's like saying, like, why are you buying those weird jeans? Who cares what they look like, as long as they protect your legs? I think they could have added touch, <laughs> I think they should have added a touchscreen to this device, because Windows 8 is so heavily reliant on that. And HP actually does do touchscreens pretty well. So I just thought, like, why take it out when that's where Windows is going? And they are doing touchscreens. They're doing the HP Envy 23 and the HP Envy 20. Uh, which are basically the same HP Envy's you're used to, but they will have an HD touchscreen, up to three terabytes of storage. Uh, but all of these actually come with a solid-state drive to increase boot time. Uh, I, I, we mentioned in the news news the price of the, the Spectre 1. That is going to be $1,299 in November. These touchscreen versions, because they're spe they actually have uh, the older Intel line, uh, the third-gen Intel line, October... They're coming for $999 and $799. And then there's a budget $499 HP Pavilion 20. That's that's a smaller screen and not a touch screen. So they're kind of covering all the bases. What, what do you think of these prices? Mm. You guys these are, prices aren't bad, honestly. I mean, uh, if you're getting solid state, then that's, you know, that that's the expensive piece right there, I think, in most of these systems these days. So And, and touch screen. These, these are not bad. Um, they're they're competitive with some of this, and we'll see what Apple's response is to 
to these touchscreen computers uh, pretty soon and what their pricing is. But I think it's not bad. I don't know. I mean, this, this is going up head-to-head -head with Ultrabooks at this point for this price point. So the thing is, what, what do you want to use? What's your use case scenario? And desktops, even though the HP has been doing all at once for a long time, these are good prices. But I, I think the use case has changed enough that I don't know a lot of people that keep going out to buy desktops. If they're going to get a desktop, it would be an all-in-one, so this is competitive. But I would just think that at that price point, like twelve ninety nine. I can get you know a pretty good portable ultrabook that has a lot of this this functionality already, and I can take it with me, and it's thin for a reason. Yeah, that was the first thing I thought of when I saw that twelve ninety nine price. Is like I you know I've been thinking about maybe getting uh, s some kind of uh, Zara uh, a Zara Reason book. Uh, it's a Linux based laptop, mm -hmm. and uh, they if I soup it up a lot would be still cheaper than this. I definitely don't need a desktop either. Like I use a desktop for heavy duty stuff like video games. <laughs> like really important stuff. <laughs> really yeah, yeah. It's just the stuff you really care about. Yeah. <laughs> not, absolutely. Not stuff not not the all of one stuff. The stuff you can use a thick computer for. Right. Yeah, I absolutely. Don't, yeah. I want it to be <laughs> yeah. bulky. These days it's like I want I want a, a laptop that's as that's as powerful as everything I I need to do. And then some sort of an alternative display at home, you know, where I can sit and I can kind of have something bigger and it's not just this. Mm -hmm. And so I see stuff like what HP has rolled out and it's like, yeah, I mean, I get there are people who have a need for this. It yeah. just it doesn't fit into what I think a lot of us want to add on to these days. Kids, students, people in high school and, sure. and college. Yeah, yeah. This, this might be good. Exactly. You know, fits into a dorm room nice and easy. That'll be their sales pitch. It's like, yeah, yeah if you need one machine for all things except for touch, so be it. <laughs> Who wants to be reaching up, touching, and get girl? Yeah, touching arm. a desktop or uh, it just doesn't feel like what I want to be doing. I don't know. It, it's you know, it's uncomfortable for your arm to be doing that in the first place, and then also your screen gets all gunky. Uh, to me, I don't really need it. Don't, I don't touch need it at all. that desktop. <laughs> it's gross. It seems the longest time when I was in school, everyone would always point to their laptops and they touch the screen or they touch the CRT. Uh -huh. I'm like, don't touch that. And now I want I want a touch screen back. Now you want, yeah. If you're going to touch it, at least it should do something. That's true. All right. Uh, this episode of Tech News Today brought to you by Squarespace.com. Now faster and easier than ever with the new Squarespace. Uh, from a technical perspective, it's impressive. A different code base uses HTML5, CSS3, new JavaScript foundations. It's fast. It's flexible. And from a user perspective, you don't need to think about any of those things. You just go in and make your website. It's more intuitive than ever. They develop new templates. Uh, and so you just say, uh, you can import your old site, put it in the new template, move some things around. It's nice, nice and what you see is what you get. And then it looks great whatever device you're looking on, a big 23-inch touchscreen all-in-one or not or a tablet, or a laptop, all these different devices, Squarespace restructures your site automatically so it looks good on any size device, professionally designed, and you didn't have to think about it at all. You just go in and worry about your content. Uh, Squarespace is faster and easier than ever, and you don't have to take our word for it. Go try it out. Uh, you can play around with a, a free trial. You don't have to give them any information, no credit card number, nothing like that. Just play with all the new widgets, put some Twitter feeds up there, some Flickr, import your old site, and see what it looks like in all those seven different designs. And then if you decide to keep it, use this code. The offer code is TNT9. If you decide to purchase, that'll get you 10% off your first purchase on new Squarespace accounts, including monthly and annual plans. Annual plan's the best deal if you can go for it because you get 10% off the entire year and a free domain name with registration. That's squarespace.com. Use that offer code TNT9. And we thank them for their support of Tech News Today. Onward into uh, an interesting Ars Technica article today about unsubscribing from email, one of my pet peeves. Yeah, this was actually, it's, it's, it's a really fascinating article. And it all stems from one of the most annoying things in the world, I'm sure you'll agree, is you get an email, you're like, ah, I'm on some newsletter. I don't want to be part of this. So you're looking down for the unsubscribe button at the bottom of the email and then you click it and then you get taken to some sort of a login screen and you don't remember what your login information is and it takes forever. And then even if you do get in, you're like, okay, where are my preferences? So that's the most annoying thing in the world, at least when it comes to email, right? So you end up saying, okay, we'll just send it to the spam filter. But that's not really the point. The point is that you're not supposed to be getting them in the first place, and the company's supposed to make it relatively easy for you to opt out. So ours said, all right, so can spam, they looked into can spam's wordage of this sort of situation. In can spam's compliance guide for businesses, the FTC states, quote, 
you can't charge a fee, require the recipient to give you any personally identifying information beyond an email address, or make the recipient take any step other than sending a reply email or visiting a single page on an internet website as a condition for honoring an opt-out request. So ours says, all right, well, if you go to a login page that then will take you to the website, that's two steps, right? right. That's and not one. And you have to one. remember the stupid login information for this service that you probably forgot you signed up for yeah, in the first place. Yeah, but even if you remember that, that's two steps. That's yep. not a single step. Now, this is a big deal because can spam regulation violations can earn companies penalties of up to $16,000 per email sent. So this is mm. a big deal if someone's actually not honoring this rule. So ours asked the FTC, uh, talked to an FTC, TC representative named Cheryl Hackey, what was acceptable under can spam? She responded, quote, the FTC provides general guidelines for opt-out mechanisms and doesn't endorse any particular mechanism. So when asked if a log on screen between users and email preferences specifically is acceptable, she said, quote, there are specific guidelines for what must be included <laughs> in an email and honoring opt-outs. But again, the guidelines for opt-out mechanisms are general since there's not really a one-size-fits-all mechanism. In other words, I'm not going to answer your question. Well, or we don't know. We uh, don't know if we want to police it on that We know it when we level. see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so ours reached out to LinkedIn. LinkedIn, you may have experienced this, sometimes forces you to log in to manage your email preferences. Um, not in every instance, but many. LinkedIn says, we know some members don't wish to receive these emails. We make it easy to discontinue them via the unsubscribe link at the bottom of the message. We ask for the member's password to confirm it is truly the LinkedIn member who is accessing account settings to update their email preferences. So LinkedIn's basically saying, listen, this is a precautionary measure. This is a security measure. We don't want Sarah to be able to just enter Tom Merritt's email address and all of a sudden he's opted out to something <laughs> that he wants to be opted. You all right there, Tom? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. You need some water? Sorry about that. Yeah, I'll get a little sip here. So that's LinkedIn's side of the story. Ours also are a very thorough article. They talked to uh, Constant Contact, which is the company that runs Safe Unsubscribe, which is a... Uh, a product that uh, email newsletters use to manage subscriptions. You may have come across it. Uh, Tara Nattinson, who's the manager of ISP Relations there, told ours it's against the Can Spam Act to require people to enter more than just their own email address to unsubscribe from something. She also said some companies, most companies who require you to log in to stop receiving email are dealing with things more complex than just an email subscription to a newsletter. So there's some gray area. But it, it, from what I can glean here is can spam is right in the middle. So you've got companies that say, no, 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 this, it's for your own good. We can't actually just provide the one-step uh, authentication because that's not safe enough. And then you've got people on the other side saying, no, 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 that's not right. And can spam is in the middle saying, we don't know how to well, enforce this. Well, the FTC yeah, is, is saying, the FTC, exactly. we'll enforce it when we're forced to. Is what it sounds like. They don't. They and don't nobody's go forcing them. Fight. So they say this is all very vague. For the most part, it's sort of like you kind of write your own rules around these guidelines, and it's a case by case basis. So here's, we're here's, not going to tell anybody they're doing anything here's wrong. Here's my reaction to this: annoying your customers is never good business. Correct. And if you want to uh, not annoy customers, you give them the easiest way to unsubscribe. From things as possible especially if you want to keep them like in linkedin's case like they want to keep me as a customer they just don't want to annoy me with emails they should make it very simple but linkedin and, and is one of the most to my email annoying address, email and i can services. only unsubscribe by by responding from my email address that's the safest way like there's no need to make me log in there's no there's no banking information going back here in fact you shouldn't have to click on anything It'd be very easy to just reply to front with that email with an unsubscribe in the subject line, and we've been doing it for decades. Yeah, that's that's the way to go. Uh, there, there's a couple of things about this that bother me. I mean, first of all, uh, when they say this is a security measure, I mean, I, I agree completely with you, Tom. Who who is maliciously unsubscribing me from <laughs> newsletters? And if they right? are, why do I care? I I'm sorry, but if I'm mad at my ex-girlfriend, I'm not going to go uh, unsubscribe her. From <laughs> no one's going to do no this. No more There's LinkedIn no emails for you, lady. Yeah. Nobody's making money unsubscribing people from newsletters. I'm sorry. That's just not happening. And uh, and the other thing is, is yeah, the, this, you know, when you make me go through a couple steps, I, I will remember your company at that point. If I just click unsubscribe, your company is gone from my head, and then one day I may stumble upon you again. And say, oh, yeah, yeah, subscribe for that for whatever reason. 
but if I had to do a couple things, I'm going to go, yeah, I'm not going back to this website. This is, this is horrible. And I actually, when I went to South by Southwest this year, I had to sign up for a bunch of newsletters to try to get into these events, you know? And so after the event was over, after South by was over, I had a ton of newsletters coming in. So I was going through a bunch of these different versions of this unsubscribe process. And the ones where I just click on the email takes me to a place where it says, you are unsubscribed. That was, you know, to me, that's the way it should always happen. And anytime I had to sign in and figure something out, I was done with that company for good. So, yeah, don't annoy your customers, everybody, please. Whatever FTC says, don't annoy your customers. Well, I think the question here is, I mean, should some of these companies be being fined many thousands of dollars? Because well, they're not, I mean, what is the rule exactly? It's undefined right now. And the FTC should make a kind of, I don't know, a clear rule and then maybe make a ton of money. <laughs> I mean, this is yeah. that's a weird thing. Like, there's like a, a whole budget issue. If you could find a bunch of people who are just violating this like crazy, why not do it? Like, I just think it's a little strange to be like, well, well it's they got, only got so many resources in yeah. the FTC. That because the they need more money. Prioritize what they go after. I'm guessing that they're getting more money going after other things. Yeah. That. You know, sixteen thousand dollars is actually not per that big email? of a fine relative. To per something. email, it could add up pretty quick. We it got depends. a deficit. Yeah, <laughs> make them pay. I'm sure LinkedIn. the FTC's raking in all kinds of money. <laughs> They're not sitting around doing nothing, or maybe they are. Well, we don't know. I I, I hear they're involved in all kinds of patent stuff. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the uh, Kansas City fiber that Google is providing. Uh, Google posted to their blog that 180 out of the 202 neighborhoods have qualified. That's 90% of the neighborhoods in Kansas City, Missouri, and Kansas City, Kansas, have qualified for Google fiber. What they had to go through, if you don't remember, 5 to 25% of the households, depending on the neighborhood, had to put down a $10 pre-registration fee uh, and agree to get Google fiber for Google to agree to bring fiber to that neighborhood, to, to spend the money to roll that fiber out into that neighborhood. Uh, there's a $300 install fee, and the other incentive here was that if you signed up in this first round for their regular service, you wouldn't have to pay that $300 install fee. Uh, you, you could actually sign up the $10 pre-reg fee and not sign up for the service. You just have to pay that $300 install fee, but you get free broadband. It's not the fastest broadband. It's not the total fiber broadband, but you get free broadband. So it's $300 now and free from then on at a slower rate or get the $300 fee waived and you get like the super fast you know, one gigabit per second broadband for their $70 a month charge. Now, Google says they're still processing requests, especially from apartment buildings. So they should have a final number later this week that is above that 90%. Only one neighborhood in the entire Kansas City metro area, did not have a single sign-up. That was Sheffield West. Nobody in Sheffield West wants anything to do with Google Fiber. Uh, and if you don't qualify this time around, so if you're thinking of moving into Sheffield West, you have to wait until sometime next year uh, to sign up. Order of the rollout will be determined by the percentage who signed up. Uh, they will do Kansas City, Kansas first. Then they'll move to Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, and if your neighborhood qualified, even if you didn't pre-register... You can still sign up for the service starting this Thursday, September 13th. When I saw this, this, the original plan, the idea that you had to basically have a large percentage of people in a community care about Internet speed. And then they, in the Google video, they're even explaining, oh, call up your neighbors and friends and tell them you I've want seen, Google I've Fiber. I've pictures of signs in the yard like it's a, like it's a political campaign. It's, I, I can't believe it worked, and it worked this well. I mean, this is, this is something that is, I think sometimes, I think it's very important to me, and I just think, oh, maybe people don't, don't care about this. But to see a whole city like, just thrilled about one gigabit per second for 70 bucks a month, like, that's dirt cheap. Well, you know what they announced this weekend that helped push this through, right? NFL. The NFL Network is coming to the Google Fiber television service, and the Red Zone will be available. That that's the one that shows you the most important plays as they happen uh, for ten dollars a month. That's a brilliant move. If you can get, as Sarah has been saying for the longest time, if you can get the NFL on your set top box, mm -hmm. you're set. And with Google get an NFL Red Zone, which shows you the like the best parts of the, the game. If you're just sitting around, you don't want to keep flipping back and forth. Like I used to run that all Sunday because that's pretty much what I wanted to watch because it was all the highlights just when it was happening live. That's just huge for Google. Yeah, the football is, uh, people are crazy for football in this country. I, I can't believe, it was like Jesus came back uh, yesterday when everybody was posting on Facebook, thank God that football is back. I've been, my life has been horrible this whole entire summer. I think and we have I different friends. I just can't believe how much, yeah, I think we do probably. <laughs> but I, could, I, you know, I like football, but I like my team only. I'm not a huge football guy. 
but people will literally watch every single game on Sunday. And uh, yeah, so this was a great move by them. They, they know how crazy for football Americans are. So good on them. I just want to know if it has IFC. If it has IFC, I'm down. That's yeah. probably the only channel I really watch. Yeah, I haven't checked to see uh, if they've updated the list of, of what uh, networks are being added. They, they say by the time they launch, which, by the way, won't be in time for the, the NFL season, I don't think, uh, they will have a lot more channels available for the Google Fiber TV service. Let's finish up with this Toys R Us tablet. Yes, this is the big... This is, 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 that, that, now, we've <laughs> had the Leap Pad. Yep. That's a kid's toy that looks like a tablet. This is more... Like an adult tablet, this, right? This is, this is, it's running Android 4.0. It's got 4 gigabytes of flash memory, micro SD card slot, gigahertz processor, gigabyte of RAM. It's got its own app store with 7,000 apps. And obviously, since it's an Android tablet, can get you know real apps if you want that too. And uh, But the big differentiator on these, and like the other children's things, is this, uh, the Tabio? Is that how, you, how are you saying that? I, that's what I read I it as. Reading, tabio? I keep, I keep no. reading it as... Uh, <laughs> tabio, I think it's tabio. I keep reading it as yeah. Tybo, because I keep that old... <laughs> what, what would a kid say? Probably <laughs> tabio. tabio. I'll say Tabio. So, yeah, but this tabio. Uh, has tons of parental controls, and that's going to be the big differentiator. And the thing about Toys R Us, they are saying this is only going to be available in their stores or online for Toys R Us. They're not selling it anywhere else. Is this the kind of move that brick-and-mortar stores need to do to keep people interested in coming in? Because... The thing yeah. is, a lot of the, one of the issues that the Toys R Us has had is people would come in, would play with the toy there. They go, "This is great." Do a price comparison and then order it online. Yep, I, yeah. I, I absolutely think so. Barnes and Noble. I, I was sitting in a Barnes and Noble this weekend, and I was thinking exactly that because there's a huge part in the front of the store that's taken up with the Nook, and then they have a cafe where you can get coffee and snacks, and they're starting to sell tabletop board games. Kind of, you know, impulsive purchase, and tabletop games are becoming bigger and bigger all the time. It's, a, you know, it's going to come back. I'm like, Barnes and Noble is is steering into this. They know that they can't just have billions of books on the floor. That's not nearly enough to get people through the doors. And so I think Toys R Us is looking at that too, saying, yeah, we, we got to have some stuff that makes people, you know, want to come in and see it. Of course, you could still do the same thing with the Tabio, right? You could come in, use the tablet leave and go order it online but i guess you'd have to order it from toys R Us. just toys R Us. order it from them yeah exactly yeah if the distributor is also the the manufacturer that's that's really the best way to make money at this point i mean if you look that's why apple is really the richest company ever is that they got they got the stores and they make the stuff you know and so whether you buy it there or you buy it online you're getting it from them and all the money's going there so i think a lot of the companies are starting to go yeah let's let's do that let's uh let's add more things to our brick and mortar store to bring people in because people are not going in anymore. Uh, and that's the big that's the big problem with retail right now is people are not leaving their house. Just there's no reason. I was so. out and about this weekend and I noticed so many either out of business or going out of business signs on stores, all of mm -hmm. retail. Yeah. Not restaurants, which which restaurants is the harder business theoretically, but I, I think it's an effect of that. So really you can't eat online yet. No, you can't well you kinda can. Grubhub. Uh yeah, you know, get it now. I, Burritos delivered to my doorstep. Yeah. I, I, awesome. I'm ashamed to say that, that Grubhub has made me uh, probably fatter than I should be right now <laughs> because of the fact that now I don't, I don't even have to walk down the street. A bike messenger pulls up with a hamburger for me. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty weird how it's 1999 how all over again. I think yeah. the parental awesome. controls of the Tabio are, are really interesting too because I, I think there are probably a lot of parents who are like, my kid wants the, you know, they say iPad, iPad, but it's like it's not necessarily – always the right thing and maybe you mm -hmm. want to use the ipad yourself but you've got a kid who's like they like that tablet idea because kids like you know the stuff that their parents are using but if it's something specifically for kids so you've got 50 apps preloaded and it's all stuff that kids like um the the browser is is locked down to the point where you're well aware not only where they're going but if they kind of get off into a, 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 you know, a website that they haven't visited before. You can get uh, sent an email. So you're just well aware of what your child is doing at all times. I think that's really attractive. For $150, a lot of parents say, this looks mm -hmm. great, and I don't have to share my tablet. That's a grown-up tablet. It would be fun for hacking, too, because I'm thinking about the Fire. It's $159, <laughs> but it doesn't have an SD card slot or micro SD card slot. This thing does. I mean, this is it's. How it's big is this thing again? A seven-inch display, I believe. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's yeah. about the same. Yeah. As, you know, you can get the Nexus, which is the Nexus Seven, which also doesn't have an expansion port, but this little thing does, and it's run, running ice cream sandwich. So I'm just thinking, like, I'm gonna hack the heck out of this thing. Yeah, it actually. Yeah, uh, that's pretty good. It looks like the uh, one laptop, uh, the OLPC. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it's got look a little, to it with that green look. That. And I drop things all yeah, the time. Yeah, you could drop so this. And yeah, yeah. Be fine. Probably. And Amazon yeah. made a big deal out of parental controls for Kindle. Go ahead, Bill. No, this is this is a huge. I think this this is a huge market. I mean, when when I was working in the retail stores, 
we constantly have parents come in. They want to buy, you know, the iPod Touch or an iPad for their for their kid. But before they leave the store, they want us to figure out how to make it completely safe. And to make an iPad completely safe is actually really tricky. You have to you have to do quite a few things. And also the the browser, Safari, the browser, it's actually very hard to to do uh, safe browsing. So there, there's actually child safe browser apps you can download. But then you have to go download those and add it to it. And then you have to figure out how to hide Safari from the child. Mm -hmm. So it, this is, I mean, this to me just solves that problem. And and I, you know, if I'm the other tablet makers, I go, well, this is going to cut into our business a little bit. And for 150 bucks, I think a lot of parents are going to say this is the right choice. Yeah, I don't um, think this is going to, like, knock anybody out of the market no, or anything. But it's a no, nice niche but, for, for Toys mm -hmm. R Us, for sure. No, I think they'll do well with this, especially if they're not expecting to take over the tablet market. Just get, you know, that little bit of the, of the market that's people buying it for their kids. I think they're going to do well. Yeah, get people, get people into the stores. Let's move on to the randomizer. Randomizer. Hermione Granger is the new Anna Kornikova. According to McAfee, uh, Emma Watson is the celebrity most likely to be used by online criminals as a lure. If you're not putting those two together, Emma Watson played Hermione Granger in the Harry Potter movies. Uh, and she is now the most dangerous celebrity, according to McAfee, actually beating off Heidi Klum, Megan Fox, and Selena Gomez. Are you wow. tempted to uh, download, Tara? <laughs> Anything you say with Emma Watson in the title? Yeah, now I am. <laughs> sure. I know, it just makes her more attractive, really. Well, that's great. I mean, when you're going to do, like, you want to check if your computer's safe, you just got to download anything with Emma Watson. That'll be your test bed of, of horrible things, and maybe you'll just get, well, infected. Talk about your honeypot. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying words. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I am saying words. <laughs> They Don't blame time. me for the words. <laughs> uh, let's let's take a break and thank our other sponsor for today's show, Gazelle. I need to sell my iPhone because whether whether I get the new iPhone that's announced later this week, or I get an Android phone, or a Windows phone, or a freaking BlackBerry, I'm getting a new phone in the next thirty days. And you know what Gazelle will do? They will lock in a quote for me for thirty days. So I'm going to do it right. Now, go to gazelle.com. Join me, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com. Lock in that quote because it's not going to get more. It's going to get less the more people like me that do this. So do it now. Go sell your old iPhone or you could sell your, your old iPad, your Android phones, whatever you got. Just go there. Uh, tell them what you got, what condition it's in, uh, and they'll give you a quote that's good for 30 days. And then you can take your time and decide what kind of uh, replacement you would like to use that money for. They'll send you the money, by the way, by PayPal or check or an Amazon gift card. So if you're thinking of buying an Android phone, you can go on Amazon. You get 5% more from Gazelle with an Amazon gift card. But but don't wait. Uh, offers are good for 30 days. So go now, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com. Lock in that value while you can. It is the simplest and easiest way to just get it done. And you don't have to mess with it and spend a lot of time with it. They'll get, let you print out a shipping label right away, send it to them, and you get paid fast. Gazelle.com. We thank them for their support of Tech News Today. Let's see what's on the calendar. Uh, the conference part of TechCrunch Disrupt started this morning, runs through Wednesday the 12th. Something else is going on on the 12th, but I just don't remember what it is. I'll get back to you tomorrow. The Intel Developers Forum starts tomorrow, runs through Thursday the 13th. And on September 28th, the FCC is set to vote on the proposed auctioning of UHF Spectrum. Once we find out what happens, we'll let you know. I want more Spectrum. Everybody wants more Spectrum. That's a good thing. Give us Spectrum. Let's see what's incoming. Incoming message. Got an email from Matt who says, uh, will I finally be able to surf the web on iPhone 5 with Verizon LTE and make calls at the same time? If so, I'll be first in line on the first day it's available to pre-order. Goodbye, AT&T. I think LTE allows you to do that because AT&T was like the only only uh, a vendor that allowed you to have data and your calls at the same time because that was a, that was the GSM standard. So GSM, is that right? Yeah, CDMA is. Roughly, Verizon. yeah. Some so, yeah. people quibble that it's a particular subset right. of GSM. But, but yeah, yeah, that differentiated their phone against everybody else's, and that was that's going to be over pretty soon if, if uh, iPhone, the next one, has LTE. Now, Aaron Killar says, who is making calls and surfing at the same time? I, I definitely have done this uh, when you're giving somebody directions. And you, you look it up on Google Maps. You want that data connection. You may be surfing the web or, or finding a phone number for a restaurant, something like that. The directions usually. A lot really of times I'll text that stuff, but it does come in handy. It may not be the killer feature for me, but it's pretty good. 
Next email from David, who says, I was looking for foundation today at audible.com, and I noticed two things. Whisper Sync for voice enabled, and get this audiobook for the reduced price of $4.95 when you buy the Kindle edition first. So it looks like there is a substantial discount for the Audible audiobook. Unfortunately, you're stuck paying for it with cash instead of credits. Other books have different prices. To the Last Man by Jeff Shara was $9.95. Doesn't appear to be length-based or even author-based because The Glorious Claws, another book, was $4.95. It's the same author. Not sure exactly how this works and if it works with the library checkouts to the Kindle. You know, I checked my Audible apps. Yeah. The Audible app on iPad had the synchronize option. Yeah. The Audible app up to date on my iPhone didn't have it for some weird reason. Why? I mean, it's hmm. the same, it's the same it, app. It's not a universal app, though, is it? Uh-huh. It is. In fact, I don't even think it's a universal app. I think it's an iPhone app. And then on the iPad, it just gets I two exit. Oh. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Really? Yeah. That doesn't, yeah, that's weird. That uh, I would think it would have to be a universal <laughs> app where for UI reasons, they didn't have room for it or something. I don't know. I can't even imagine why that would happen. No, I, it's some kind of bug or something. Cause, it um, must be because what you're running on your iPad then is exactly the same exactly. as the iPhone. Like, why would it not? I'm looking at my settings now uh, just to make sure it hasn't changed or maybe I was I was... You drunk. Know, drunk. To, well, it was. <laughs> uh, Sleepwalking. Obviously, it was the weekend. <laughs> he loves to drunk listen to books. Yeah. Uh, help and support. Yeah. No. Email. Yeah. I don't want to. I'm do just excited about the pricing. It's of this. riveting stuff, Tom. I'm going to end up buying Good a TV. lot more audiobooks <laughs> this way. Back to the actual email because I'm excited about that. Yeah. yeah I, like the, the, I was really concerned it's going to be like twenty bucks on top of it. Oh, ten dollars on top Mom of says ten dollars. Refresh payment. the library. Oops. It's actually bucks. not. It's not be. a universal app, as far as I can tell. So yeah, you're just using the iPhone app. Weird. Re I'm going to refresh my library. I'm going to do what Dr. Mom said, may and maybe that'll fix it. That's riveting. All you right. Thanks, everybody, up. for watching or listening. You can find our uh, place to submit articles at technewstoday.reddit.com. That's our subreddit where you can not only let us know what stories you'd like us to cover, but vote them up or down. Uh, we appreciate all the folks who not only go in there and participate, but, but help keep it tidy. It's a nice place to go on Reddit, technewstoday.reddit.com. Willie Dills Gregory, uh, fantastic to have you along, man. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, no, that was great. Uh, it was a ton of fun. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. We'll definitely have you back. And uh, let folks know where they can find you every Friday talking about World of Warcraft. Yeah, we talk about the the good old World of Warcraft on the instance. Me, Scott Johnson, and the Terpster, who uh, it comes to us live from the UK every week. And uh, and it's great. It's a ton of fun. And you should always listen. We, we do it every week without fail. Because there's three of us, so if one of us can't make it, we always make it. So it's good. And uh, also check out Potomac.com if you're a podcaster. It's great. Uh, and LitQuakes LitCast if you like literature. You can find me there. I produce it. You won't hear me talking. But uh, just know I'm in the background pushing buttons. Awesome, man. Well, that's it for this episode of Tech News Today. You can find us on the web at twit.tv slash TNT. Our email address is TNT at twit.tv. And our telephone number, operators are not standing by, but you can leave a voicemail, 260-TNT-SHOW. Jason Heiner from Tech Republic joins us tomorrow. We'll see you then.